So now that we've learned how to uh, calculate some of the exact values using um, the unit circle for trigonometric functions, I want to show you how to use your TI-84 calculator um, to get some approximate values to trigonometric functions. So the first one I want to do, I want to do the cosine of 48 degrees. So break out your uh, TI-84 calculator. So it's not going to look exactly like this, but it will look similar. So right in the dead center, you see the cosine button, COS. So hit the cosine button. And what we're going to do is we're going to hit uh, 48 inside. Now, if I hit enter, I have a number there, okay? Now, how do I know that this is the correct number? Well, what we need to do is we need to check to see what mode we are in, okay? Now, if I look at this problem, I'm in degrees form here, so I wanna be in the degrees mode. So go to mode, right by the second, and I look and I say, right now, it looks like I'm in radian form, so I want to click the degree form and hit enter, okay? And now I'm gonna hit second quit. All right, so let's try this again. The cosine of 48 now is 0 0.6691. So you gotta be careful, okay? You gotta be careful, you gotta check the mode that your calculator's in before you start trying to plug in values. If you're in radian mode, you're gonna get something different than degree mode, okay? So my answer here is very different. The answer is 0.669, roughly, okay? Now what about sine of 15? Let's try that. So I go and all I do is I click the sign button, S-I-N, and I type in 15, I'm already in degree mode, and that's 0.2588. So roughly 0.2588 becomes nine. Okay, so no big deal there. Now, tangent of pi over 12. Notice that there's no degree symbol up here. When we don't see any degree symbol, we assume this is radians, okay? So we assume it's radians. So if you had seen like the sign of just 15 and that was it, you would assume that 15 is in radians, okay? The only time we do degrees is when we see this little degree symbol here. That tells me the degrees, okay? So assume it's radians. So that means when we do for tangent, we need to first go into our mode and convert back to radians. Hit enter, and now second quit. And so what I'm gonna do, I see the tangent button, and I'm gonna type in pi, so I go second, and then the little caret button, I have a pi, and I divide by 12, and then I close my parentheses, hit enter. 0.2679, so that's 0.268 what this rounds do, 0.268, that's three decimals, okay? So hopefully, hopefully that's helping you out some. Um, these might be a little bit weirder because when we look at this, we don't see secant on here. Now you do see a second sine inverse. Now this Sine inverse does not mean one over sine x, okay? That's not what that's, this is an inverse function which we'll talk about later in the course. So think about this in this respect. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, okay? So what is the reciprocal? It's one over the cosine of pi, okay? One over the cosine of pi. All right, so when I do this in my calculator to calculate the secant of pi, I do one divided by the cosine of pi. Close my parentheses, enter, I get negative one, okay? Which is what I thought I should have gotten, but just to make sure calculator is working, we're good to go. Now this one here, cosecant, this is one over sine of pi over three, okay? So let's see if we can do it. So one divided by sine of 
pi divided by three, close parentheses, 1.1547, so that's 1.155. Okay. Now this other one here, this is the reciprocal co the cotangent, so reciprocal of tangent. So one over tangent of pi over four. What's that gonna be? That's one divided by the tangent of pi over four, which I think is just one. Okay, and so yeah, so that's just one. So that one's pretty easy. So that's one over one, which is one. All right, so hopefully that gives you an idea of um, how to work that. Now say, you know, there's some, some uh, application problems that give you some wonky formula. And so I'm just, look guys, this isn't a formula for anything. I'm just gonna make up some weird looking formula off the top of my head and uh, you know, then, then, you know, you can use that formula to find X, Y, Z, whatever. So maybe this formula is like one third pi r cubed times one plus secant theta cubed over tangent theta squared. Okay. So whatever. And then maybe I say, I want I want to know, you know, if if r is equal to 2 and my theta is equal to 15 degrees, you know, what is this v of 15 degrees, right? So literally all we do is we plug and chug. I do one third pi times and then r is 2, plug a 2 in. And then I have one plus secant of theta, which is 15 degrees, all cubed, over tangent of 15 degrees squared, right? And so this part right here, this part right here in your calculator, you can find by doing one over cosine 15 degrees, okay? So that will help you with computing that piece there. So no big deal. I could throw this in here just for funsies. Um, so let me see if I can remember that because that was a pretty big formula. So like one third, okay, times uh, pi times, and then what did we say? It was r equal to two, so two cubed. And then what do we do? And multiplied by parentheses, one plus secant of 50, uh-oh, I need to make sure I'm in radians, or I'm out of radians, I need to be in degrees, okay? So hopefully that doesn't mess anything up. So one plus, and then what did I say for secant? It was one over cosine of the 15 degrees. Okay, close that parentheses, and then cube it, I think. And then I, oops. That's not where I want that. I want to divide everything by tangent of 15 degrees and then square that. Okay. I think we got it. And so 983.7477. Okay. So that would be what you're doing there. You're just plugging and chugging into your formula. Okay. So that the calculator gives you a way... Now look, if they say on the test that they want the exact value, you know, this, this is an approximation. That's cool, but it's not the exact value. The sine of pi over three, you think about pi over three, that's a 60 degree angle, right? So when you're looking at your little triangle, that's your 60 degree angle. Um, square root 3 over 2, 1 half, and 1. The sine of pi over 3, that's square root 3 over 2. So 1 divided by square root 3 over 2, that's 2 over square root 3, which is, if you rationalize, it's 2 square root 3 over 3. 
just to make sure we got that right, if I did in my calculator two times square root three, and then all divided by three, that gets you that same 1.1547 that you got um, a couple lines previous, okay? So this is the exact, so on your test, you might be asked to find the exact, but if you're only asked to find the approximate, you can just throw it in your calculator, no big deal. So exact value, you know, you, you gotta be careful. All right.